All right, so now we're going to discuss the wheatrometer circuits. Okay, so the wheatrometer that we're talking about, we got a couple of them, but this is the Teensy 4.0 version, uh, and it uses the, the Teensy 4.0 uh development board microcontroller development board to control the uh the spectrometer okay we also have a what is it called here uh, uh, tcd uh, is it 1403 1403 this is the charge circuit device okay charge charge circuit device charge capture device okay so this is our detector that picks up the uh, light light intensity all right and the charge circuit device is going to have a power input a couple of those and it'll have a piece that goes it's got three three uh, three pins that attach directly to the uh, to the microcontroller and these are the ICG pin, the uh, clock pin, and the SH pin. So we have those that are inputs to the charge capture device. All right, we also have a, a ground and we have an output, V out. Okay, so what we got to do now is pick up the voltage on V out. And to do that, we have a circuit called a voltage follower circuit. And if you don't know what that is, there is a video that I made just a second ago, and it should be on the, uh, on the same page where you found this one. Okay, so that outputs to a, what is this thing called? This is called a, an inverting uh, inverting amplifier circuit and we have two resistors in that circuit that's R1 this is R2 okay we have a reference voltage uh, let's call that V ref low all right and that comes from a PWM output on the teensy okay we have a uh, uh, what is that called? It's called a low pass filter on that. So this is the output that gives us our low reference voltage. Okay. After that, the, we have, let's call this V read. Okay. And V read goes through a resistor for no real obvious reason. And then it goes into our A to D converter. Okay, so the A to D converter is going to read the voltage there. Okay, so let's take a look at what our circuit here is doing to V output. And if we do the calculations, we know that on this piece here, we're going to have V out. And over here, we're going to have V read, which is going to be R1 plus R2 over R1 times V ref low minus R2 over R1 times uh, V out. Okay, so that is uh, a, a uh, result of this feedback loop here, right? And we have, first of all, we have an amplification uh, amplification constant so the output is going to be first of all it's going to be inverted and it's going to be amplified and then we have this term which is an offset okay all right what do we want to know about this all then let's see we want to know that when I make these things R2 and R1 R2 is 4 kilo ohms r1 is three kilo ohms and that means we have seven over three times v ref low 
minus 4 over 3 times V out. Okay, our amplification, damn it, I'm off, off screen. Our amplification factor is 4 thirds, and we have this V ref part there. Okay, so let's take a look at what our inputs and our outputs are going to look like. So the output from the uh, TCD, I think it's 1304 instead of 1403. I think I wrote that wrong on the previous page. Anyway, the output is going to be a voltage. It's going to be between the uh, high voltage that we feed the, the TCD 1304 and the ground, the low voltage, right? It's got to be between those two. It can't be any higher than 3.3, can't go negative. What you'll see if you look in the, in the uh, data sheet is that it has a dark voltage that is high and a saturated voltage that is low. All right, and what we want to do is we want to amplify this to be uh, within the constraints of our A to D converter. All right, so we said that V read is 7 thirds V ref low minus 4 thirds V out, and V out can be anywhere between these two. The other thing you should know is that this is a variable here, right? I think this has some probably pretty pretty tight uh, pretty tight quality control at Toshiba, but then they have uh, things that don't meet their quality control standards. Those probably go into the dumpster and somebody goes and picks them out and sends them to be resold on Chinese websites. No, no shade on the Chinese air, but that's where I buy them from. And w the position of these things might not be standard on the low, co low cost uh, options that we have, right? Now, if that is the case, then this voltage will help us out, right? And we'll, we have another voltage that's going to help us out. All right, so if there's a quality control here, issue here, then we want to be able to compensate for it. And I don't know that it is a quality control issue. It just, I, ha I haven't run thousands of these things through, through testing, so I'm not going to elaborate further on that. All right, so this is V out over here. It's going to range in between these these two limits. All right. Now, what do we want to do? We want to take that and put it in over here and see what we get. Well, what we get depends on this. All right. And what we want to do, we want to set V ref low so that the voltage read at V out equals voltage dark is zero. Okay, so this thing gets flipped. There's a minus sign on there. So when this thing comes out, it's not only going to be amplified, but it's going to be inverted. All right, so if we take V read and set that to zero and solve for V ref low, what do we get? We have 7 thirds times V ref low equals 4 thirds times V dark. Okay, still on screen, that's good. Now we solve for V, lef, v ref low and we get uh, 3 sevenths times 4 thirds V dark. Have I got this right? I suppose I do. That cancels and we now have a voltage for V ref low that we can in input into our teensy to come up with, uh, well, that, that gives us zero for the V dark. Okay, so the output V read 
in this case, when we have uh, incident light ranging from dark to saturated, is going to start at zero and it's going to go up until it hits saturation. Okay, and now this, that is four thirds of V dark minus V saturated. Okay, so by changing our resistors, we could change this amplification by changing the reference voltage low, we can change where we are here. The last thing you got to know about this circuit is that we have another voltage that inputs to the ADC. Okay, we have another PWM input. And this one is V ref high. Okay? And what the ADC does is it measures uh, it measures V ref high minus V ref low, okay? Not V ref low, minus V read. and maps that to a digital value between digital between 0 and 65,000 roughly okay all right so now by adjusting v ref high we can adjust our scale all right so we have v read and if we set v ref high If we set that here, then we're going to get some value. And if we set it here, we're going to get another value. All right, so we have a high reference that can be changed by, uh, by changing the, the PWM output. You can have it up here at 3.3 volts. You can lower it down, and I think we're, we're going to show that having it lower so that you are not you are not uh, well you can measure below the saturation voltage and use that as your your high output there there's some value to that okay and hopefully I'll be able to explain that a little better all right so if we set our v ref high here then we can measure intensity versus the output from our output from our uh, ADC. We'll go from zero to about sixty-five thousand at this point. Yeah, missed it. Boom! There it is. And then it's flat. Okay, so we want to make sure that 65,000 is on our on the the uh, the linear part of the of the output. That's all I'm trying to get to. All right. Okay, I hope that explains why we uh, explains the circuit and tells you a little bit about why we set it up the way we did. And uh, I hope that hope you learned something. I hope it made sense.